This Supply Side Omega-3 Insights video was underwritten by Qualitas Health. The Omega-3 market has been growing rapidly over the past several years. PackageFax data places global sales of omega-3 dietary supplements at $3.2 billion. Part of this sales growth has been fueled by positive research emphasizing the health benefits of omega-3s. Unfortunately, getting to the right intake levels can be challenging, with a majority of consumers falling short of even the 250 milligrams per day recommended by the World Health Organization. Further, with a burgeoning global population, Supplying that level of omega-3s strictly from the oceans is untenable. Research from GOED, the global organization for EPA and DHA omega-3s, suggests it would take 650,000 tons to meet today's annual global intake needs, but the ocean's capacity is only 530,000 tons. This has driven suppliers to explore new technologies and production options to develop more sustainable ingredients and ensure the quality of their offerings via supply chain integration. Whether marine or plant-based, these new ingredients also bring a unique value proposition to the table. Hi, I'm Heather Granado with Supply Side Omega-3 Insights, and we've traveled to windy western Texas, where we're taking a look at sustainable production of long-chain omega-3s. Sustainability is a big topic within the omega-3 market. Some researchers are looking up the food chain to the way fish get their omega-3s via algae. Microalgae have been cultivated for years for specialty industrial applications such as aquaculture and biofuel. In 2008, the founder of Qualitas Health, Isaac Burson, was recognized by Time Magazine for his work around algae and biotechnology, including algal cultivation for biofuels and algae projects for NASA. He recalls learning that 50% of the oxygen in the atmosphere comes from algae, which are playing a major role in the carbon cycle. Once I realized that, I really made a big change in my life and decided to grow algae using CO2 as a major food and create biofuels out of them and other valuable uh, products. So that kind of triggered me into looking closely into this world of algae. There are thousands of microalgae types found in water systems from oceans to rivers and streams. In exploring algae for the biofuel industry, Burzen started looking at a saltwater algae strain, Nanochloropsis oculata. Burzen and the team spent the better part of a decade looking at Nanochloropsis, intrigued by its content of unopposed icosapentaenoic acid, or EPA, as well as the polar lipid structure of the omega-3. EPA, though, is definitely indicated for adult health, for cardiac health, um, as well as for um, mood and mental health benefits. The team worked to optimize the biology of the nanochloropsis strain to enhance its ability to produce high content omega-3 EPA and deliver optimal yields in a variety of climates and conditions. And through this complex matrix of research, incrementally found changes that we can easily make with our inputs and with our conditions uh, that would, you know, increase the EPA a little bit, make another change on top of that, increase the EPA higher. Using different nutrient ratios, light regimes, salinity levels, and more, the team was able to increase the levels of EPA to between 7 and 10 percent in the algae, all on an accelerated timeline without modification or increased rates of mutation. Through the years, the team developed what they have termed algaculture, applying large-scale agricultural techniques to farming production of algae. The process is fully vertically integrated, from the master culture used for inoculation through the patented extraction process that yields the high-value branded Almega PL ingredient. The process starts in the growth room, where beakers are inoculated with master culture. Over a seven to 10 day period, the algae will receive nutrients, carbon dioxide, and light exposure, allowing them to hit peak density. At that point, the culture is transferred into flat panels with a CO2 bubbling system and a smaller light path, allowing more light to hit the medium. After another seven to 10 days, the culture will hit a new peak density and make its first move out of a fully controlled environment into the inoculation pond system. The pilot ponds are shaded and lined and allow for tight control of environmental factors as the algae is introduced to the open environment. 
So in the small cultures, the bubbling was providing that mixing in and out of the light. And in these large cultures, the paddle wheel, as we call it, is basically providing turbulent mixing throughout the length of the pond, bringing cells up into the light, but then bringing them down and giving them a rest as well. After the algae reaches maximum density and is fully acclimated to the environment in the pilot ponds, the culture is moved into a pre-production pond. Each unlined pre-production pond has the same width as the commercial pond units and holds about 800,000 liters of culture. Each commercial size pond includes between four and six pond units. The ponds at this point have reached maximum density and go into continual harvest mode, with the harvest percentage matched to the growth rate. So we went from previous step 800,000 uh, liters, and now we've got 1.6 million in each of these commercial units. So we're ending up somewhere around 6.4 million liters of algae uh, that is being produced and at this point is actually ready to be commercially harvested every single day. During harvest, submersible pumps pull out the appropriate amount of culture, which is sent into the collection harvest tanks where the production team adds a food grade chemical to change the pH, causing the algae biomass to settle before transfer to the processing area. And every morning, the team refeeds and rewaters the ponds to prepare for the next harvest. In the processing area, the harvested culture is further concentrated, any impurities are removed, and it is put into totes and frozen for shipment to the extraction facility. The dense cold pace maintains the quality of the algae and its nutrient content, and is optimal for use in the company's patent-protected, hexane-free, wet extraction process, which maintains the polar lipid content. The processing team keeps individual lot numbers and can trace back any given ingredient to the pond where the algae was harvested. That focus on traceability and production quality is of critical importance. We've built that into all of our processes from, from the start. To be um, compliant with the necessary quality requirements, the necessary regulatory requirements, because that's you know, part of being in the game. The company holds an extensive IP portfolio covering all aspects of the production process and ingredient composition. In addition to having the scientific and theoretical knowledge, the company committed to taking a year to ensure it worked through any environmental issues that might arise. The first commercial pond has been operational since early 2013, giving the team the opportunity to see how the culture reacted to various iterations of heat, cold, dust, rain, and more. The Quality Lab conducts a range of tests on the density, pigment composition, toxicology, fatty acid profile, and more. Every day, samples from every pond are brought to the lab to ensure the algae have the necessary inputs, that the growth rate is on target, and that the composition is correct. One key test looks at the ash-free dry weight to assess density in each pond unit, which allows the team to determine how much culture to harvest, generally between 15 and 20 percent per pond unit. Another quality test documents the pigment composition, as nanochloropsis has a specific chlorophyll composition. The pigment that our algae photosynthesizes with is a very specific signature, and almost all other algaes um, that would be interested in growing in our systems have a different signature. So every sample that we take that, you know, in the morning that tells us about pond growth and health, for example, we measure this, this uh, pigment signature and when we start to see any, even a blip, even presence of a different signature, we take action. While the algae is the plant under cultivation, the high value bioactive of interest is the EPA. So the lab team also conducts daily analysis of the fatty acid profile of the oil to ensure the EPA levels are as expected. The algal EPA comes in a polar lipid format with both phospholipids and glycolipids, which support the bioavailability of the omega-3. Clinical trials and bioavailability studies in animals have shown similar bioavailability between krill oil and Almega PL. The safety of Almega PL is underscored by the US FDA's recent acceptance of the company's new dietary ingredient notification, affirming the safety of Almega PL's specific composition and manufacturing process. In any discussion of safety, questions come up around the open pond cultivation, the 
team at Qualitas keeps a close eye on the health of the nanochloropsis in the cultures, actively managing inputs to optimize the system so it thrives and can crowd out any potential competitors. Part of the desire to develop this optimized agriculture-based system was the issue of sustainability. So we definitely see ourselves in uh, algae-sourced omega-3s as the future in order to meet the market demand without impacting the environment. The way we grow our algae, we don't use any um, precious resources. Uh, we're growing the algae um, in open ponds on uh, non-arable land using non-potable water. Most of the energy comes from the sun. Uh, so in locations such as our location in West, West Texas, um, as long as you have availability of land and uh, the aquifer water is suitable, you can literally expand to an unlimited capacity. In fact, the company has built out the infrastructure for more than 60 acres of cultivation on a 360-acre property. Its commercial production started in June 2014 at about a third of the capacity, and Qualitas will ramp up over the next 12 to 18 months, ultimately hitting capacity for more than 200 metric tons of omega-3s. As we've been out here, interesting couple of points to take a look at. The first, control of the supply chain through vertical integration. Obviously, uh, investment over many years in optimizing this particular alga, the nanochloropsis, you've seen it from the nursery into the inoculation ponds, into commercial development, and what will be leveraged into 60 acres of commercial development. Um, from that, going into processing, being able to take that and get the EPA levels that you're looking for. Obviously having control throughout the entire supply chain, really important to folks who are looking for more traceability uh, and transparency in their sourcing of ingredients. The second aspect is sustainability. So you've taken an alga that is looking for brackish water. It wants abundant sunlight and obviously you need a lot of space to be able to develop this on sort of that alga culture, agriculture at a large commercial development scale. And all of these things are something you found here where they're not being put to use right now. Omega-3s have many benefits, but the development of new sources while remaining mindful of environmental and sustainability considerations is important to global health and market longevity. Supply Set Omega-3 Insights will continue to explore these issues as the Omega-3 market develops. This Supply Side Omega-3 Insights video was underwritten by Qualitas Health.